sort of like Batman Forever this bit. Terrible. Right, so that's pretty um, attention seeking. Just a massive jet flying through the middle of Gotham. Um, I wonder, I wonder where that thing, look on that rooftop there, it just dropped something up there. Oh, what, what's, what's going on here? There seems to be a man changing. Oh, is that, is that Batman? On that roof? Slowly getting ready. Oh, yeah, it definitely, where he's got, has he got his mask off? I think he does. This is what always annoyed me about this sequence is, a Batman standing in broad, well not broad daylight, but you know, he's just had a jet draw attention to this uh, rooftop and then he's walking around with his mask off, strutting about for the camera like some cosplayer who's, it's his first Comic Con, you know what I mean? He's walking around like, hey, I just, I'm just happy to be here. I want to get a Hall H and go woo on every trailer. You know that because every every trailer at Comic Con, it's just you, they're unwatchable because they're just like. <laughs> so we're announcing that Wonder Woman is a woman. <laughs> He's exactly where you just tried to fly to. He's in Ace Chemicals. I've played this game before. Probably shouldn't be clearly talking to the commissioner's daughter on a calm channel in front of a policeman over there like a fucking idiot. Time to find Scarecrow. I did always kind of like this bit um, where he throws up and scans the city, even though the lad uh, the lad could have went there before when I was doing the training, but he turned him around. He turned him. He knew better than I did, even though I've completed the game about. 75 times because I've got no life um, so yeah it's based at Axis Chemicals I lo this sort of um, I wonder if Suicide Squad stole from this because Captain Boomerang does a bit like this where he throws a boomerang and it spins around with a uh, with a camera on it yeah so it's good to see um, that this game influenced something great Oscar winning Suicide Squad yeah, won an Oscar that film, so very, very good film, I'm sure, I'm sure you love it as well. I love how the lad's got a remote control tank, but he's still, he's still jumping in it to fight people. It was very dangerous jumping in it, but he's like, fuck it, you think I live this long by doing smart shit? No, I stand in front of helicopters and let them have targets on me. Anyway, fuck these lads. Um, so, DC have recently announced that Batman is a meta-human, um, which is a bit, you know, it kind of goes against the law. It kind of goes against the main thing that everyone likes Batman for, which is that he has no powers. So they've just decided all of a sudden, yeah, Batman actually is a superhero, um, which is a bit crap. But thinking about it, what... Like, if, if you can answer this, I'd appreciate it. What actually is his superheroes because their uh, superpowers? Because the guy can't run fast, he doesn't have super strength, he can't like fly. So, is his meta human power just that he's Batman? Just a little, just a little thing to think on there, anyway, guys. Um, I know you love thinking about DC all day, like I do, uh, because you're a loser. And you, if you, well, you are a loser if you're bloody watching this. That's all I can say. I'm on my way.
my mask ready and everything. Man, are you still going on about that? Every year I go out trick-or-treating on Halloween. It's a family tradition. I think your idea of trick-or-treating might be a little different to everyone else's. Morning, ladies. <laughs> I just called you. Huh? You think well, yeah. Who left in there, but they're not responding, and the facility's locked down. If they're still alive, I'll find them. They, they might not be alive if they're a skeleton crew. <laughs> if you catch my drift, <laughs> just a little bit of Gotham humor for you there. I never really understood um, this bit because. Batman has absolutely no idea who's in this um, So I don't know why he walks to he walks to the end of the bridge to stare down the helicopter The lad seems to be a lot smarter than that um, But yeah, for some reason he just uh, He doesn't know that he doesn't know the guys are not gonna kill him. Yeah, it's just uh, oh Yeah, I just w walk in front of my enemies the guy seems a lot more tactical than that. It seems uh, very stupid. So was he was he just gonna stand there and let the lad shoot on him? You know, it doesn't doesn't really make sense. I never liked that bit of the game. It seemed a bit too um, action movie. -y. It's not the only bit I didn't like in the game. In fact, I hated every fucking tank section that that's coming up. You know what I hated as well when. Deathstroke, greatest hand-to-hand -hand combat fighter in the DC universe, often regarded as a better hand-to-hand -hand combat fighter than Batman. Anyway, they have a big boss battle with him. Build up to it, build up to it. It's a fucking tank fight. Always are the fucking tanks. Another thing I never got about this game was... Look, I know I'm nitpicking. I do really, like, really, really like the game. Um, it's one of my favourite games of all time. But where did they get all the money from for this? Um, because I've got absolutely no idea. Scarecrow never had this much money. Jason Todd was dead for about 20 years. Spoiler alert. So there's no way the lad would have all of this money knocking about a higher 5,000 people. Buy 17 million tanks. Never ending stream of tanks. And all this shit, which was a bit annoying. Um, in the, I uh, uh, always kind of thought uh, it might be Ra's al Ghul because in the Under the Hood um, graphic novel, a lot of people don't know, but Jason Todd was actually brought back by Ra's al Ghul, um, and he was sort of brain dead for a bit. Um, but then Superman, I think it was, did something. Can't remember. Can't quite remember what. Um, he did. Any, so that's that's a good bit of trivia for you. He did something, and it caused a sonic boom, which um, allowed Jason Todd to come back to life, or, or something. But Jason Todd was alive inside his grave. I think it was. And he beat his way out, but he was severely brain damaged from the Joker. Um, so the lad, the lad was mental, and then I think they dropped him in the lad's wrist pit, and he came back. So, bit of trivia for you there. Um, story was written by Judd Winnick, who also wrote the animated um, version of it. Animated version is much much better than the graphic novel. It's so much better than it that I actually. Um, I bought the graphic novel one thinking, oh, you know, graphic novel version is normally better than the animated movie. Read it and went, right, what the hell is this? And just list it, uh, listed it on eBay straight away. Often when I'm angry with things, I just list them on eBay. Um, and Under the Hood was one of those ones that I just did. Uh, and apparently Judd Winnick, um, the writer, actually wrote the animated version of it because he just thought, yeah, this isn't, uh, this isn't uh, originally uh, as good as I thought it was going to be.
That sounds like something they say when they don't really know any technical terms. Like, um, if you watch the the Bourne Supremacy or something, the latest one anyway. Anyway, for some reason they say like, hey, the SQL's downloading to the database on the new router modem thing. And you're just like, yeah, mate, I work in computers. You've got no fucking idea what you're talking about. Whoever wrote that clearly just went through my CV two years ago where I just wanted a job in um, internet stuff. So I just, ro just Google loads of buzzwords and just wrote any shit on them. Uh, so thanks very much for checking out my CV, by the way, uh, writers of the Born Identity. It's just a shame that you couldn't write a fucking good film in the last one, you dickheads. You dickheads. You're a dickhead. I like how the guy kind of breaks them down. So it's sort of teasing you who 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 it is. You know what I mean? Like you, you know, oh, he's got to know Batman well to be able to say, "Ooh, I know all the places just to touch him." I used to touch him in those special places. That those were the sensitive places. So the guy clearly knows him well on an intimate level. Some would say, "Hmm." Ace Chemicals, um, very famous part of the Batman lore. Um, depending on what origin story of the Joker you believe, then this is the place that caused his accident where that bleached his skin. Who oh, looked very cool there, just uh, stepping over and sort of hitting the switch. That's why you should never make X your jump and activate button. But anyway, I digress. Um, if you've seen Batman 1989, and let's face it, you probably have because you're watching an Arkham Knight playthrough like a bloody idiot, probably on a Friday night. What the hell is wrong with you? Get a life. Um, then it was called Axis Chemicals and that, which is a bit strange. Um, I never quite got why they... They had a different um, name for both of them, but you know, the origin story in that um, of the Joker is very much the same as the one in The Killing Joke, uh, um, except for in The Killing Joke, it kind of revolves around the Red Hood. Um, so basically, in The Killing Joke, uh, there's a there's a guy called, well, I don't know what he's called. But anyway, he's a stand-up comedian. His wife's pregnant. He wants a bit of money. On, you know, he wants a bit of money to provide for his family. He can't pay the rent. Stand-up comedy's not not paying much. He's not very funny. He reminds me a bit of myself. Um, so he basically joins this criminal fraternity um, to do a robbery on Ace Chemicals, which is where he used to work. Uh, as he knows the ins and outs of it, the 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 pris the, the criminals are of course. Um, very interested in having his insight and his knowledge. So the higher the guy, the higher the lad. Anyway, during one of the meetings, he finds out that um, his wife has been, she's just died. There was a, a, t a toaster malfunction or, or something like that. Something ridiculous, um, which was, was the point of it. And she's dead. So... The criminals are like, look, yeah, you, you dickhead. You better still go through with a job. Uh, you know, think about how lovely of a funeral your wife's going to have. Uh, because you're going to be bloody rich. So, the, the guy goes through with it. Um, he regrets it. And he's, you know, he's, his mind's obviously on other things when he goes to, goes to do the job. Anyway, they didn't realise they've got bloody security on there, um, and you know the the two mobsters that he's doing the job with get shot. Oh, I'm finding these funny. I should have really scanned for them. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm not. I know in the game you meant to actually scan for these dead workers before you go and see them, um, but I'm not going to bother because I'm a bit of a badass. Anyway, Batman shows up on the scene and he sees the lad and he goes, look, yeah, you're coming with me. The guy, Jack will call him, he stumbles into over a railing and lands. He just he just lands in the, the, the pool of slime and toxin. The guy gets brushed out of the pipe the other the other side, and he emerges as uh, the Joker. 
Um, so quite a significant um, location in the in the Batman mythology. If you you're one of those people like me who thinks the Joker's Batman's best villain, then this is pretty much uh, ties massively into his origin story. So really good. Um, they also revisit it in Zero Year, which is sort of the New Fifty Two retelling of um, the the Batman origin story, um, and that's that's like a, a, it's it's sort of a similar story. It's a bit more action packed, um, but yeah, really really good. Definitely recommend checking out the Killing Joke, which is one of the best Batman stories ever. And Zero Year is also one of the best as well. So, yeah, make sure you get them on your reading list. What are they doing? Are they, like, fucking them up the arse or something there? So one of the best bits of Batman v Superman um, was how much they got, like, the, the combat scene right. When Batman breaks into, um, save Martha. Martha! Um, just that fight scene, especially in the extended edition where he's just absolutely like brutalizing people. Um, it's one of the best fil scenes in a comic book film ever, I think. I mean, sometimes I just load that up on what on YouTube just to watch it. Um, it's so well choreographed and it just completely catches how Batman would fight. Um, I remember watching the raid for the first time. And there's a scene in that where the main character, I don't know the lad's name, I don't want to say anything that it could be in case I'm wrong and I sound like a racist. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not pro Donald Trump. Um, yeah, it just has like such a good fight in that and I was like, oh, if they ever made a Batman movie with that scene and a guy who fights like that, it would be like bang on. Um, so when the Zack Snyder one dropped and I seen that trailer, the first trailer where they pretty much show the warehouse fight, I like actually went into my room and like cried for a bit um, because I was just like, oh my God, they completely nailed the fight, um, just the fighting from, from top to bottom. And I just nailed all the fight in there because I got like an 80, 82 combo clash there so shout out to me i nailed it more than snyder nailed it um, and say whatever you want about Zack snyder that scene alone is like amazing like i really hope the justice league has a scene like that because it's so so good um and you can literally like if if someone ever says you know why do you like batman just show them that scene Oh, well, that's good. Sometimes I wonder if Alfred just said that because he's like, yeah, just kill this lad, just kill him. Um, you know what the best way to thwart Batman's plan in this game would be? Would just put people in the tank because he, he wouldn't, he's like, he's only shooting this now because he thinks there's no one in it. What a little pussy. Alfred should have just lighted the lad. If he had a killed him, then the whole game would have been over. Everyone would have understood him. They, would, they wouldn't have been mad. They would have been like, yeah, he was gonna he was gonna murder everyone in the city. Yeah, you ha he, Batman had to kill him. You know what I mean? I think people like can be quite understanding of murder if, uh, if it's like the best option. Like a lot of people kick off about Superman killing General Zod in Man of Steel. Uh, I seem to be the only one who was like, no, it's fine. Yeah, he had, he had to do it. I mean, there's no prison on Earth that can hold Zod. They didn't know about Kryptonite back then. Um, yeah, they have to. He has to kill him. If anything, he should. He should have killed him already. He shouldn't be letting the lad walk around. Uh, and Zod clearly was like, look, we're gonna fight to the death. I'm not. I'm not messing about here, son. I will knock you out cleanly. I think that was a line from the script. Um, so he had no choice. If ba Batman's killed in the comics before, and you know, the, even Batman Begins, he let Rachel Ghoul die in that train. I don't care about the whole like. I'm not gonna save you. I, I don't have to save you. Like yeah, that you you are killing them. You that's definitely murder. You know. That's not like a good thing. That's like seeing someone in a house fire. You could have helped them out. Instead, you don't. 
that uh, that doesn't not make you like a murderer. You you let that guy die. So Batman's he has he's killed a couple of times. I mean Batman's origin in the thirties. Uh, he murdered people left, right, and centre, and it has slowly been brought to, you know, he doesn't kill. What I think would have been great in Batman v Superman is if Batman actually didn't kill in that movie. Like the, one of the big criticisms of Batman v Superman, other than the terrible script and Lex Luthor being absolutely terrible, and you just want to kick its head in, is that Batman kills in it. Um. And it would have been so much better. Ooh, we're driving with style there. Would have been so much better if Batman, like, hadn't have killed people. Um, but he was so like scared of Superman that he was like, oh, this is gonna be ha this is gonna be the first like person I ever kill. Um, but it's it's the only way. And then you know when he's holding that spear over his head, and he's about to stab him just before he says Martha. <coughs> terrible, terrible. He's like, oh, this is going to be my first kill. You know, it would make it so much more dramatic. But instead, they just have a uh, Batman gunning people down left, right, and center, which uh, is, yeah, not a not a good thing. But you know, I'd forgive him for killing the Arkham Knight. The lad was a dickhead.